In this video, we want to talk about strictness. Now, we know that Haskell is lazy, so values are only evaluated when we need them. Now, let's look at how that works. Now, the underlying principle of this are so-called thunks, meaning that uh, calculations that do not have to be done right away are stored as, well, not evaluated thunks. So let's look at this function f, where we do some comparison with a modulo 2 of some value a, and then we uh, either return a or b. And let's assume that the value that f returns has to be evaluated, because it may be the last value that Haskell uh, needs to evaluate. Okay, so Let's say we have a function call f with 1 plus 1 and 2 plus 1, and those are not evaluated right away, but stored as thunks. So within our function, they now look like this. And we see right away that now we need to evaluate 1 plus 1 in order to do this calculation. So those two get evaluated. Well, why do they both get evaluated? Well, because they are the same thunk. Okay. So now they're evaluated, and they are two, which is great. And now we see that this um, condition resolves to true, and this means that we can return two and just discard two plus one. So the one thunk we never evaluated, and we didn't need to, which is great, right? Okay, so another great example of thunks and where they're useful is this factors function and the is prime uh, function. Since everything here is lazy, um, we never build the whole list of factors for the test for a prime. What we actually do is we check every single uh, factor there is in the number we're checking, and once we have found one that um, is divisible, we actually stop. So even though we build a whole list here in the factors definition, we never calculate it, uh, at least not if the number isn't prime. So that is quite cool. Okay, but not everything uh, works that well with thunks. So this fold function is a great example. Now, I've actually like quoted this function as being a good implementation of a sum function, which is, well, somewhat true. So let's look at this. When we evaluate this function, we of course start by adding the 1 to the accumulator 0. And since we never need to evaluate those values, they get stored as thunks. So when we add the 2 and the 3, those are just additional thunks put into the thunk. Well, yeah, as you can see, we build up this whole thing, which then gets returned as this unevaluated thunk. And now if we want to evaluate it, we have to do it step by step and then arrive at 6 as our result. So if we look at the whole thing, we can see we do a lot. Uh, we have to do 6 steps uh, in order to do something which we, well, theoretically could do in just three, right? And then we have another problem. As you can see here, we build up a pretty big thunk, and this thunk needs to be stored in memory. Now, of course, this isn't a problem for uh, just a list of one, two, three, but let's look at this uh, list. This list, of course, is lazy, so it gets uh, produced step by step, yet the thunk we have to save gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you actually want to evaluate this, well, get ready to buy some RAM, because otherwise you will not be able to. But then the question is, can we do better? And we can. There is a function called foldl prime. It's in the data.list module. So what does it do differently? Well, foldl prime is the strict version of foldl. By the way, other list functions or some other functions have a strict counterpart to them. And as we can see here, the huge difference is that the accumulator, every time we apply the new value to it, gets evaluated right away. And we do not wait or build a thunk. Now, how does that work? 
And how is Fold L Prime built? Well, there is a very special function within Haskell called sec, which from its from its um, uh, type signature looks a bit weird. And if we look at its sort of formal definition, it is still very weird. What is this function? Well, it gets two arguments, but returns the second, and the fourth one is uh, the the first one is discarded, as it seems. But that's not true, because sec is strict in its first argument. What does that mean? Well, sec forces the evaluation of A before it returns B. And it is the only function within Haskell that has this property. This is not defined in the source code. This is actually like defined in the compiler that A is strict in this case, or sec is strict in its first argument A. So this function can be used in order to force strictness. So now we can look at how fold L prime is built. Now here we see that of course we have our our um, our pattern where we uh, have the empty list where we just return the accumulator, which is fine. But then in the second pattern, we build Z prime, which is the application of the function to the accumulator and the value X, and then we use sec. So Z prime is the A of sec and the recursive call is the B of sec. So what is happening? Well, we force the evaluation of Z prime and then we do the recursive call. And that is why no thunk is built within the accumulator. We force the evaluation of it. There is another very important uh, function built into Haskell that uses sec. So we already know of the dollar sign, which is function application, but there is also the dollar sign exclamation mark. And when we look at the definitions, well, the dollar sign is just the function application, but the dollar sign with the exclamation mark forces the evaluation of the second um, argument before doing the function application on it. So if X is some complicated thunk that is now put into F using dollar sign exclamation mark actually evaluates the thunk before being put into F. Where is this helpful? Well, when we create IO actions, we basically never want to return a lazy value because it really doesn't make any sense. Since semantically what we try to do is that when we have actions or monads in general, we want the computation to be over once we return from the monad. Yet this isn't the case in Haskell, simply because, well, everything is lazy. So what we return in this case, f of x, is lazy. So if x is lazy and f is not strict in its first argument, then we return some thunk, which might be huge. So we don't really want that. So of course we can rewrite this with the normal dollar sign, but we can also rewrite this with the dollar sign exclamation mark. And now what we do is we force the evaluation of f of x before we return. So this means that whatever we return is evaluated before we do the return. So before we um, jump out of the monad we're in right now, we have evaluated the value. So this is all fine. And as we have seen, applying sec, at least with the strict folding, has some performance improvements sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. But be careful. Applying sec is not that, um, well, let's say straightforward as it might seem. There are optimizations within GHC that are sort of disturbed by sec. It has something to do with using intermediate types that get discarded at some point in the, uh, in the compilation. And sec can, well, basically mess that up. So be careful. And also something to keep in mind is that you should not use strictness when you do not need it. Yes, strictness can improve the performance. And sometimes it is needed because otherwise we are just unable to evaluate something like the fold L call. But 
we shouldn't use strictness everywhere within Haskell, since, again, like the lazy evaluation is part of it. And the lazy evaluation is a sort of um, prerequisite to a lot of optimizations within Haskell. Actually, GHC, when um, compiling with optimization levels, which we will probably talk about in another video, actually tries to do a strictness analysis, which means it tries to figure out which of the functions can be rewritten into a strict form. The problem that we have seen with fold L occurs in the interpreter, and it occurs when you... Um, compile a file without any optimizations but once you compile it with an optimization level it actually well figures out that the fold l should be strict and it then replaces it with the strict version of it so those problems that we have seen with thunks do not always happen when using the optimizations by the compiler but that is something for another video Okay, so if there are any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.